The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. If I can get this thing going here, why? It uh, does not want to do that. Uh, okay. That's correct. That's correct. Right. Okay. Don't know why it didn't like it, but it didn't. Now it likes it. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your host. And it doesn't matter where you're at, as long as you're here at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what do we have going on today? Well, we tried yet another sell-off. Uh, let me get this back up here where I can... Where's that at? Oh, what a way. Okay, there we go. Uh, we tried another sell-off. Um, let's get back to here. And didn't get very far. Um, we've got kind of a real tug of war uh, between bears and bulls. Uh, anytime the market starts looking a little weak, we see a lot of money entering the Treasury market getting pumped back in. Of course, that gets sold and turned into uh, buying of uh, equities in at this point, it's just buying of a couple of equities to keep the S&P and the NASDAQ higher. Uh, NASDAQ's up 53. The uh, S&P's up 28. Crude oil's up 57. Uh, gold is up uh, 670. And if there is really kind of a surprise for me this week, it was that gold did not run about 40 or 50 bucks higher. Um, generally in markets that are back and forth like this, the biggest winner is either a commodities uh, like uh, crude and uh, gold. Uh, not really getting a lot of that. So maybe there's something else going on uh, telling the story that I'm not quite uh, uh, listening to the market and hearing. Uh, but uh, I think more than likely you can say that it's a Fed that uh, – is uh, talking out both sides of its mouth, uh, saying it's going to taper, and then as soon as it does, throw a big wad of cash at the market once again. Uh, da, 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 da. Am I still using GitHub instead of my, inside Microsoft these days? Uh, yes. Um, GitHub is the, uh, is the thing. And especially if you have Visual Studio for Microsoft. But I'm uh, not exactly sure where that question came from. Um, but, yeah, inside Microsoft, I don't know if you'd call it inside Microsoft. GitHub is its own standalone thing. Uh, the reason that Microsoft actually bought GitHub, um, as we go on this tangent from John and the Den, uh, is uh, to get a look at all the code and the way people are writing it. They are now using machine learning to figure out all the standard patterns in developing software and have been delivering uh, new versions of their Visual Studio, which is their code editor for programmers, uh, to actually do that. And I'm seeing some of the fruits of that actually come to life as I work on something uh, and have for many years now. Hopefully it will bear fruit one day. But uh, certainly a lot of this stuff uh, going on. GitHub is the place. And why there was a lot of consternation, I don't get to use that weird word very often, consternation about Microsoft buying it. Now, I haven't heard a lot of complaints lately uh, to that level. They've been rather a benevolent ruler of uh, GitHub. But uh, now uh, Microsoft's using it. The same way Google is using search, and that is we want to know what people are doing and what they're going for. For Microsoft, it's, uh, you know, you can put anything on there in any language you want on GitHub, and they're just uh, looking at the files because they're all 
pretty much public. Some of them are not public, but uh, <laughs> they get to look at those too. <laughs> so does it sound anything like Google? Uh, and then instead of search, it's uh, programming code. So it is nice. Uh, oh, trying to give me a new opportunity for mixed metaphors. Anyway, um, I bought uh, calls on Goal, uh, on uh, GLD this week. Um, uh, gold went, you know, slightly higher. Didn't really do much for my uh, my calls. Uh, but uh, I got out today, about an hour ago. Um, you know, when things are not, when markets are not acting the way you think that they should act, uh, the old saying is, when in doubt, get out. And uh, now I'm back to 100% cash. I can probably think a lot clearer more clearly what I see over the weekend and whatever happens Monday. Again, we're in a headline-driven market and one that has uh, kind of the man behind the curtain, uh, that being Chairman Powell. And you never know what lever he's going to pull uh, or when he's going to stop. But I, I suspect that what they're trying to do is have this market hover right around this area until the end of the year. In fact, it may go up slightly. But uh, I think they're going to let off the accelerator any time above 4,700. Uh, below that, they're going to probably throw a little money at the problem. Uh, I still love that ad. Uh, so I'm going to play it again because this is, a, I don't know, it goes back maybe five years, but it's a great IBM ad. Are you suggesting we throw money at the problem? Precisely. So when we see that kind of stuff go on, it's tough to figure out that you've got a lot to the upside or a lot to the downside. And of course, uh, the big men of Wall Street continue to uh, be sellers. I put this in my Tech Insider newsletter that uh, went out or is going out shortly. Uh, and that was Intel. But uh, I see so many stocks like this. Uh, it's not that it, uh, Intel doesn't look good here with a light volume pullback. Uh, what it means is that you basically get a five dollar or twenty, yeah, ten percent. Yeah, it would be five dollars, right? So you get a big bounce to fifty-five bucks. It gives it all up in the next three days, and that's kind of it. If if your stock hasn't been the one of the anointed few, three or four, all the bounces are getting sold. Now. You can make a case that $50 is fairly good support with very light volume today. But uh, I think uh, if you're talking about the uh, church of what's happening now, it is sell the rips, buy the dips, and you may do that all in the same day. Because there aren't a lot of trends uh, developing here other than the fact that things that are bouncing are getting resold back into it. Uh, options expiration continues to look bearish we're at the very top end of where it should be this is very reminiscent of last month where we were stuck uh, at a level and the markets decided to just hold the accelerator to the floor there wasn't any more speed to be had but they weren't going to let off of it during expiration so maybe a repeat of last month's expiration that is not much upside in fact very little upside but every time you pull back it's back up to that resistance. We'll be back in a minute. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. We return. Uh, Greg wants to take a look at MGNI. Let's see what it is. Um, okay. Magnite or magnetite. I wonder what these guys do. Uh, Sell-side advertising platform in the United States and internationally. Company advertising platform enables publishers to monetize various screens and formats, including CTV, desktop display, video, audio. Yeah, interesting. I don't know if it does well now. I think in a couple of years, some of these companies are going to do extremely well. But that's going to mean that Google, Facebook, and some of the other guys that are literally monopolies get broken up. But right now, I think it's an awful hard thing to be in that business and go up against Facebook and Google. Uh, they can kind of crush you. That being said, uh, the chart does not look that bad. What you would like, or let me put it this way, what I would like uh, to have a little better deal is you got a nice volume retrace. You may not get it. But uh, if you get back below the 3x3 three three for a day or two, the next move higher should be when this thing starts moving. But uh, everything that I see in the markets right now uh, tells me that we could have a lot of sideways going on. And uh, I was talking to somebody in the den about uh, if you get a profit, it's probably time to take it. Uh, just about uh, everybody has uh, seen some moves, and they last for a day, and then they give it all up, which is kind of what I was talking about on Intel earlier uh, in the show. And that is problematic because uh, – you like to think that things work the way they're supposed to work, and most of the time they do in the market, but sometimes they don't. And uh, eh, leaving money on the table is one of the hardest things to do, if not the hardest thing to do. And, but uh, generally, you don't just have one day of something. Generally, they move on, and uh, that is one of the hotter ones. Don't force trades. Um, but, uh, yeah. Uh, 877-927-6648. We did have some earnings. Uh, Oracle was the big surprise. 
Uh, one of the reasons I don't like to trade Oracle, very tough to figure out what's going on inside of it. Uh, but what they did reveal was that they are finally in the cloud business. I really couldn't see why they'd been moving up so well. Apparently, they let people on the street know just how much money they were making uh, in the cloud business. But again, they were going up against Amazon and Microsoft and, uh, and uh, Google. Um, very surprising that they were able to turn this thing around. But according to them and Larry Ellison, uh, the big S&P 500 companies are throwing huge amounts of money at Oracle uh, to use their databases so and on the cloud. So they are tending to use, uh, or at least a kind of a hybrid, and that is that they're using the Oracle databases hosted by Oracle and the Amazon Web Services uh, or uh, Azure Web Services or Google's Web Services, uh, and they're splitting off that uh, very lucrative database side. Uh, Oracle has for uh, the last 40 years, let's say 40 years, 1980, yeah, 40 years, uh, hired the cream of the cream of uh, software engineers who understand uh, databases and algorithms uh, to make the most efficient use of uh, your hardware. Uh, and uh, people are willing to pay up. Uh, kind of interesting because there are so many free databases out there now, like MySQL and others, that you know, just 90% of that free stuff runs on Amazon servers. Uh, a little different with Microsoft. They've got their own uh, SQL server uh, that they sell services for, uh, which makes them a lot. When you think of a license, single machine license, at $3,500 for uh, some of these things, it's quite a chunk of change uh, compared to free for MySQL and some of the other stuff. But uh, they're, they're that model of charging for support uh, but not the product, um, is kind of broken with Oracle going higher. They have bucked the trend of driving prices for that uh, added value high in product uh, fairly well. And it may be an issue of security, it may be some other things, but uh, they really don't talk about what's going on. And one of the reasons I find it very hard to trade is you can't really know what the S&P folks are doing. I will say this, though. If the market starts pulling back, guess what S&P companies do? Uh, they quit spending. And right now, I think with the uh, markets going to highs, uh, there was a lot of selling. Um, but as easily these guys go to heaven, they can also go to hell if the whole thing turns around especially in December, do not force trades. Okay. Uh, show question. Uh, I'm lying. Micron calls. You think it continues to move up soon? Okay, from Chris. Um, it's on the right side. It hadn't broken anything. Uh, the downside I see is the overall market, as I said, going sideways. I thought we'd have a, a much... Uh, we, we got... The, the problem is, and I remember talking about it early on in maybe 2001 or two with uh, Tim Ord and a few of the other big traders at the time uh, that I was hanging around. And there were most of them have this kind of uh, uh, three, uh, the three bears kind of thing where the porridge too hot, too cold or just right. Uh, but when you get everything in one day, which Micron uh, kind of did uh, with his big move higher. He kind of stumbled up uh, after the 19th. He had 47 million shares. Uh, he spiked with 31 million shares. It's not like this thing's coming back, and the seasonality is good for support. But the problem is if you get all that stuff in a day, uh, as we've been talking about, uh, the tendency is to either go sideways or lower. The best thing you can say about Micron is it's got a fantastic business. It's selling to the people who need more of their product uh, than they can produce, not Micron, but the, both AMD and uh, NVIDIA. Uh, so that's kind of it. Um, I have to say, you know, I don't know uh, which calls you have and when they expire, but 
you know, if you're in the money, I think you can sit on your hands. If you're not, if you're trying to get, uh, you know, if you've got 90 calls, the thing really looked like it was going to 100 uh, when it came off that 75 level. Uh, but again, every time we get to a higher high, we get a Fauci uh, declaration of the end of the world. And every time it starts moving lower, we get uh, the Fed president throwing the, uh, uh, the three-barrel T-shirt launcher of cash at the market. Uh, so we've got kind of uh, a market that really is set up uh, to teach traders that uh, it's going sideways. I think we're going to have to have some kind of big event to get us out of the funk. Uh, uh, we'll be back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And as we come back, uh, emails here. Um, first one is um, Moderna, MR, was it uh, MRNA? Um, gap down, at least got some of it back, uh, trading at uh, 256.50. Uh, yeah, eh, around there, 256.50. Uh, did gap down, um, got more volume than it's had. It's kind of not the end of the world. Uh, you are into a 
uh, low of 210.96, the November 5th low that had 60 million shares, which is 13. So it's not the end of the world out here. You covered a little bit of it, uh, but still not good news. Uh, they had problems with their flu vaccine, which uh, doesn't look like it's going anywhere. Of course, that would have been a big deal for those guys, uh, especially in a downtrend uh, when it looks more problematic that they're going to have less boosters and uh, uh, and uh, vaccine uh, for COVID going forward, which I think has been one of the reasons why this thing came back down. But support looks fairly good around down in that area, at least on volume. Um, the energy on the way down, it didn't really dry up that much, maybe 10 percent, uh, which, you know, I look for 50 but uh, certainly the only good thing you can say about today uh, is it did go down into that candle. It did do it on extremely lighter volume. Uh, so, uh, you know, if I was short the thing, I would have been out. Flu predisposition. Oh, it's the flu. <laughs> ah, that's interesting. Okay. You got to know it. 877-927-6648. If you have any burning questions, give me a call. Or email me at path at tfnn.com. Uh, we looked at Oracle uh, Lululemon. Um, down about 2%. Not a big deal out here. Um, this thing was already in a downtrend. Did gap down a little bit. Uh, you know, in the end of the world, no. What I do uh, dislike is uh, you're getting back into some candles out here that didn't have a lot of volume. Uh, going back to November, excuse me, October 18th and some other ones down here. A lot of 800,000 share days. Uh, you're piercing that today with 1.8. Uh, but uh, maybe a lot of these things that uh, did well um, are getting ready to uh, uh, turn. Uh, we've talked about it before, I think uh, even this week, and that is that uh, over history, um, there's a handful of stocks that always vastly outperform, but they outperform for about three years, and then they go into hibernation, sometimes for two years, sometimes for 10, and then they finally come back, kind of like the cicadas. Well, we've got a lot of these stocks that were driven to very, very highs, uh, massive valuations, they've come off of that. Uh, at best, you're probably looking at some consolidation between now and the first of the year. But I think, again, you're going to have to have some kind of issue uh, or headline to really change the path of many of these that have sold off in the last 30 days. I do suspect that Wall Street's doing one of two things, either thinking a top is in or looking for faster horses. And there may be a combination of those two in these stocks. But uh, why we see so many of them being sold off does not mean the end of the world, although things do not look good for the first of the year. Uh, but we do see uh, maybe uh, finally a, char a change in uh, what's going on. Uh, question about Apple. Uh, as I've said over the last few weeks, uh, maybe even a month, that it was going to be an Apple Christmas um, did see an article, and I can't remember uh, which company it was, either it was Target or Walmart, saying that uh, they were 57 days behind in getting merchandise uh, behind their normal schedule. So there were basically eight weeks um, out there. I, you know, Amazon's done a little better because they have their own chips, and uh, they, um, instead of having contracts uh, locking them to Long Beach Harbor. Uh, they went up to Oregon and Washington and unloaded at some smaller uh, ports and got it on the rail lines, get things done. Um, a lot of the bigger ones, Walmart, are literally so big they can't. And uh, that has a lot of it. Anyway, I was saying, and almost jokingly, that it was going to be an Apple Christmas mostly because they can throw everything that they sell on a 747 uh, absolutely to the rafters because it's not heavy stuff, uh, and maybe add $10 to the cost of a $1,500 phone, absorb that fairly easily, 
but especially when you're talking about earbuds, that kind of stuff, um, pretty lightweight stuff other than the box. I'm sure the box weighs four times what the product does. But, of course, uh, when you're talking about a product that costs $50 to make and you sell it for 200 bucks, there's some decent margin in that for hardware. A lot of times people don't get it. And I can't imagine that uh, accessories, other things for Apple, uh, maybe Samsung, too, because they can do the same thing. But a cell phone Christmas or smaller items that are that way, um, problematic to think that anything that's cheap couldn't absorb a $10 freight cost or much higher because of the weight uh, continues to weigh on the market. We're going to go to Will in Georgia. Um, hey. How you doing today, Will? Hey, David. Great. Thanks for taking my call. I just wanted to get your thought or opinion about uh, Planet Labs. Uh, ticker symbol is now PL. Recently did a SPAC. And um, I was actually looking at Picking it up around this level, uh, since it just looked like it finished an ABC down, but I'm a little concerned at how aggressively it went down in the last couple of days, and just wanted your insight on the, maybe the company itself and technically what your thought may be. Uh, this is not an over-the-counter, is it? No, it's uh, PL, Paul, Larry. It's I'm the just, Planet I just, Lab. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure by the way this thing moves, it, it trades. No, yeah, it trades wacko. Right, psycho. So, I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't. Well, they just completed this. They just completed this SPAC, and I think that's part of it. Before it was under the DMYQ symbol, and uh, ah, okay. last few days they approved the SPAC. So now it's officially under the PL on NYSC. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Uh, they provide daily satellite data insights about Earth. Huh? Deep insights. Uh, it offers planet monitoring, planet tasking, planet face maps, planet analytic feeds, planet archive, planet apps. Do you know anything about this company specifically? Uh, I, from what I understand, they have some backing from Google, I think, and uh, some other big investors. And uh, they do have some, some revenues, and they're looking to expand them exponentially over the next few years. But uh, basically, they have a lot of uh, pretty substantial um, – Satellite imagery that provides some uh, pretty big companies, and that's basically what they do. So, um, don't really know much else. We'll be back in a minute. Hopefully, you can hang on, Will. Yeah, thank you so much. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. We're back. Hopefully, we still have Will on the phone. Are you there? Yes, thanks, David. Okay. Yes, David, thank you. Couple things. Uh, any chance that you know a little more about this uh, company, like when its next earnings call is and whether or not they have any pipe deals? Um, what was the, the last question about pipe deal? Like, you know, what related to the SPAC offering recently, I mean? Yeah. It's, yeah, uh, I don't know about that. It wouldn't surprise me. Um, I was talking the, about that earlier on Tuesday where some stocks blew up uh, that were SPACs. Sure, sure. And uh, the pipe deal is a private investment and public equity deal. And a lot of these SPACs yeah. have been blowing up on it. What they did was after the thing uh, started trading, uh, they sold a bunch of shares to uh, at a discount uh, to somebody. And depending on the... Uh, inside uh, agreement, some of those mean that they have to hold them like a lockup period. Some of them do not. And so when some of these things have doubled and tripled, all of a sudden you find a ton of folks who bought way below the market uh, that are now up uh, two, 300% in a matter of weeks are blowing these shares out. And we've seen some of these that are actually fairly decent companies uh, see uh, see some pretty big hammering that the reason i ask is i was looking at one and i couldn't get a answer on when their earnings were or if they had any spac deals i mean uh pipe deals and that one kind of blew up this week on that so i stayed away from it because i couldn't get an answer but generally the thing to do especially on these is you're going to have to do some more digging uh if you go to the investor relations uh, page uh for uh uh, planet, uh, you'll probably find some kind of email address, and you want to know two things on these right away, and that is, do they have a bunch of outside shares? Do they have any lockup period? Do they have any pipe deals? Is there something that's going to come and land on you like an 800-pound gorilla? Sure. Uh, I, think I do, do not. I didn't find really anything right to coming out uh, next next week, but um, yeah, with these, that's one problem with the SPACs is that, again, they kind of come up out of nowhere and they seem like they may be a good deal. But then, like you said, they have some hidden shares that, you know, just blow up. Yeah, I mean, you just find back. a huge supply all of a sudden on some of those. But um, those that's what's been happening the last couple of weeks is we've been seeing those start to pop up. Uh, so I would worry about it. Um you know, it depends on what the volume is down here. Are you already along this thing? No, I was, and I got out uh, yesterday morning before it really started to drop. When I it dropped below, okay. it started support that I had. So thankfully, I got out yesterday early. Yeah, there's the quick and the dead in this one. So, <laughs> so yeah, but, that, uh, that makes a lot more sense. Level, perhaps, but I probably just have to wait for the to settle out. And, Things to calm down a bit. Maybe it's. Yeah, if, I was if, thinking maybe it has something to do with the the it trading in relation to the you know the Nasdaq itself as well with it with having some weakness. But you know I think there's more to it than that as well. Like you said. 
Well, certainly there's a risk off, except a handful of stocks that can hold the indexes up. So there's there's some of that. Um, the big thing I think now, though, is that if you haven't heard of the company and it's not on CNBC all the time in the next couple of weeks, generally the best you can hope for is sideways. So, <laughs> you know, if you're going into earnings next week, um, I don't see any reasons to get in front of this. Uh, do you have any sure. idea of uh, short positions in this or anything else? No, like you said, it's just it, since it's fresh on the NYSE yeah. coming out of that back, it's everything is just uh, um, completely in the dark. So, yeah. So when in doubt, stay out is my motto. So the Sounds great. a lot of those chestnuts uh, are well worth the money that you pay for them uh, that have been around for 200 years in the, at least the U.S. market. But um, yeah, I don't see any reason of uh, getting out in front of a freight train. You know, maybe there's a lot of money, maybe there's not, but uh, a lot of these things look a lot more like gambling than prudent speculation. And, yeah. you know, maybe you can make money, maybe you can't. I don't see a lot in this. If the volume was next to nothing, like some of the other ones I said, you know, maybe there's a lot more. If the volume was like a million today, uh, that would be interesting. But, you know, in earnings, maybe they're getting everybody short just to run them out on earnings. But, you know, have you ever read uh, Reminiscence of a Stock Operator? Uh, yes, twice. Excellent. Okay. So you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> this is, I mean, the SPACs are absolutely perfect for uh, stock operators. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I think these guys probably in the last year have died and gone to heaven, right? <laughs> if they know yeah. the inside. Sure. So, you know, um, well, I've Go ahead. Well, I, pre I appreciate your your uh, thoughts and, and opinion, and I just hope I was just wondering if you had maybe some other insight that that I didn't wasn't privy to. But I really appreciate you taking a look at it, and I appreciate your time. And thanks again for all you do, and I wish you the best, uh, happy holiday season, and uh, and the new year as well. Thanks so much, Dave. Uh, to you too, Will. Yeah, I'm going to say that hey, it, this is already the time where you're starting to look at stocks and the volumes start to come out a little bit. I mean, by next Friday, it's going to be kind of it. That'll be the uh, end of options expiration. And that becomes somewhat problematic in that, you know, you get a handful of days before Christmas. All those days are going to be very low volume. So if you're in anything, I don't think I want to be in stocks that are doing half a million shares today because they'll be doing 200 the week before Christmas. So if I'm looking at something, I want some fairly decent liquidity now as that liquidity dries up going into Christmas. <laughs> okay. Railroad yeah. racket. Someone's talking about that. Okay. Thanks, Will. Thank you. So uh, other things. I got some questions on some uh, other earnings stocks. Let's see if we can go back to this. Okay. Take a look. Got Lulu uh, Cost. Maybe it was Costco who, uh, in fact, that's who it was, who was telling us that everybody is back 57 days on deliveries. Uh, nice day for that. You're back up to, of course, the previous high. Um, I don't know what else that you can say about that. You got lots of volume. You're not breaking the high, uh, but this would be a tough one to be short into the end of the year. Certainly looks good. Uh, kind of interesting that you, well, you, you did go through the previous high, and you're back in by a buck. But uh, eh, doesn't look as bad as uh, a lot of other things in this market. Uh, Chewy uh, had a bad hair day after earnings last night, um, gap down. Uh, they're talking in the den about supply problems for it too. But this one actually broke through and went lower and did it on volume. So maybe this is one of these things where until the supply problems get cleaned up, it's problematic. You're back into a previous low that had 7 million shares with 14 today. So problematic.
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secure investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN. Also, a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. <laughs> As we get ready to wrap up another week and put it in the books, the power trading hour, um, and just kind of hanging around right under 4,700, which kind of looks just like last month where they just, uh, you pulled back a couple of times, you tried to get through it, never really made it uh, through the resistance level, but we kind of got the same thing now. Uh, but, you know, I, I continue to look at just about everything and see that we had some nice spikes this week. But guess what? We're closing lower. Um, SMHs went up right to resistance and then pulled back. Uh, opened higher, closed lower yesterday. Opened higher, closed lower today. Um, not a good sign out here. But at the same time, uh, we're getting into a seasonal issue where it's going to be harder and harder. Most people are going to think about selling into the new year when they pay taxes next year. If they sell it now, they may have to pay taxes now. Tax selling over for most. Uh, there's also the 30-day rule. Is that still in effect? Man, it's been a long time since I've thought about that, of uh, being long one stock and then being out in 30 days. I think it's still around, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So you got to be thinking about that. In fact, I'll go back and 
Uh, I don't think it was a problem the last couple of years, so I haven't thought about it. But, uh, yeah, you got to keep an eye out for that 30-day rule from selling into one year and next into the next. I'll talk about that next week, research it a little bit more. But keep an eye on that stuff. But, uh, yeah, it becomes pr more problematic. The stuff that bothers me is that we have kind of had sideways action this week. Gold hasn't gone up. It hadn't gone down. Um, a lot of stuff just stuck. Normally, when the things like this happen, there is a big event that does move us out of it. And uh, patience is the watch. We'll see you Monday. Sell when you can, not when you have to.